tá online no YouTube. Uhum. Deixa eu ver aqui como é que tá a transmissão lá. Pronto, já estamos. Bom, já estamos on, então, bom dia. Uh, vou, uh, você quer falar em inglês ou quer falar em português, Maria Amélia? Eu posso... Eu, até pergunta para Maria Jo, eu posso falar em inglês, porque os slides também estão em inglês. Ok, sim. So, uh, great is everyone. Welcome to the Celebrate Women in Mathematics, the last day of the online event in this year. I'm going to, to talk some words about our project and our websites. Uh, I would like to, to share with you all We have some websites about the dynamic women and the celebrate women in mathematics that are um, devoted to um, the visibility of women, mathem women mathematicians. Uh, it's a great pleasure. It's a great work, <laughs> hard work. To, to do this, but we are so proud to introduce to you this website. This one, the first one that I'm going to show here is the, the dynamicas.im.ufrj.br that is the website hosted in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. This is the first one uh, that we have um, talked about. And we have an um, English version too. But now we are uh, proud to, to announce that we have two more websites, one of them called Dynamic Women, Dynamicas, that is uh, outside from Federal University of Rio de Janeiro um, domain, is dynamicwomen.com.br. This is devoted to uh, women mathematicians, in particular, dynamic, dynamicists, women in math, And uh, the Celebrate Women in Mathematics website, the cwinm.com, which uh, has to an English version that is devoted to the Celebrate Women in Mathematics. So we are proud of our work and uh, we invite you all to take a look and uh, This is it. I'm going to start our uh, our planner today. It's uh, an honor and a great pleasure to to introduce Maria Amelia Salazar from Federal University Fluminense, Federal University Fluminense. <laughs> uh, Maria Amélia Salazar is uh, grad, uh, has a bachelor, uh, Maria Amélia. Yes. In Universidade Nacional da Colômbia mm -hmm. and a master in Universidade de los Andes, uh, Colombia. He, he got a PhD in Universidade, uh, University of Utrecht in... Um, I the don't Netherlands. know. How to... The Netherlands. Ah, yes, Netherlands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And she is research. Uh, she was a uh, visiting research in Centro de Pesquisa Matemática in Spain. And 
she is a great mathematician. <laughs> she got a postdoctoral uh, uh, in two institutions, Institute, uh, Max Planck Institute of Mathematics in German and uh, IMPA, Instituto Nacional de Matemática Aplicada no Rio de Janeiro. Uh, to make his mind uh, uh, tranquil, <laughs> she likes to practice uh, uh, physical act activities like run and uh, 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 is, uh, how to say natação in, in, in English? Swimming. E, yes, swimming. <laughs> She really likes the breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today she is a professor at Federal University of Fluminense. And um, she likes um, the Felix cat, <laughs> little cat. <laughs> Okay. He's, my, he's my cat, he's my cat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. So Maybe he will, he will show up during the talk. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so welcome. Thank you very much, Maria, Maria Mela, to, to come here and to give us a, the pleasure to hear you. Thank you so much, Luciana, for this uh, invitation and Congratulations for this conference. Uh, it's really nice. I'm very glad that, the, that you invited me and to be part of this, of this event. So, okay, so let me share the, the screen. Let's see. Okay. Okay, now we can see, I guess. Okay, so let me, so I'm going to talk about um, um, the fundamentals of the group points and the algebraids. And uh, so, so this has to be with the theory. The theory is a very well-established and popular theory, theory that studies the connection between groups and their interactions with uh, differential geometry and their infinitesimal uh, counterpart, which are called the algebras. And all the, and all the uh, say the theory that lies behind the algebras, which is representation theory and so on. Okay, so this is a, so, so why is the theory so like a, a popular and well-established area is because, I mean, one of the, objects in mathematics or the, the, the objectives in mathematics is to make bridges between areas, right? Because this brings a very rich and powerful uh, tool somehow that you can connect from, from one uh, area to another area, okay? So, so to start with, the, with this story, um, what happened is that uh, initially, Lee theory has its work in the in the has its roots in the work of Sophus Lee when he was studying uh, symmetries symmetries of PDEs. Okay, so and 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 this was somehow the the um, he he gave rise to the notion of Lee groups. Okay, so this study of symmetries of PDEs was somehow hiding the main structure of a Lie group. Okay, so we can think that Lie groups appear as the abstract notion of continuous symmetries of a space. For example, if you think about the sphere that I'm showing here, uh, you can look at the symmetries of this sphere or be more precise and look at the symmetries or, linear or transformations that preserve the metric and the orientation. And what you see is that these transformations are precisely the rotations along some, some line, okay? And 
okay, so you are not only uh, interested in looking at this space, the space of symmetries, but also on how the symmetries interact with each other. So this kind of multiplication, when you compose one symmetry with another symmetry, you would really like to understand um, the, 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 all the, the, um, the notion or the um, interaction that they have. Okay, so for example, when you study these rotations, you discover the group SO3, okay? Another example is what I was mentioning, if you start to look at symmetries of a PDE, yeah, and this is the uh, initial work of, of Lee Cartan. He was looking at PDEs, okay? And in order, uh, no, nope. sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, there was some message showing up in my screen, sorry. Uh, okay, so in order to understand somehow this, uh, this PDE is what he started to do was to try, trying, he was trying to understand the symmetries of, of the PDE. What, what, what was that? So the symmetries of, of a PDE, you can think of them as uh, transformations or change of coordinates, okay? So that in the, new in the new coordinates, you still have the PDE, okay? Um, okay, so, now, Lee group points appear in very natural examples, and you can think of them as describing generalized symmetries. For example, if now you look at the sphere, but you remove the north and the south pole, and you look again at symmetries that preserve the, the metric and the orientation, you realize that now that you don't have these two points, then there are very few symmetries, okay? You can only rotate along this ax axis, but you cannot, on, uh, you cannot uh, rotate anymore along any other ax axis because then this is not globally defined, okay? So you still have somehow, uh, if you look at the global object, you, you have few symmetries, but if you look locally, then you still see a lot of symmetries, okay? So when you pass, when you realize that these symmetries are only locally defined, you are now in the setting of Lie group points, okay? So for example, here, the Lie group point associated to, to, to these local symmetries is the following. These are made of arrows, okay? And two points, P and P prime are connected by an arrow if there is a rotation in the, in the sphere sending one point to, the, to this uh, other point, okay? Of course, this rotation might not be globally defined, but this set that I just defined is perfectly, I mean, it doesn't have any problem. It's, it's perfectly defined. So you take, Two points are joined by an arrow if there is a rotation on all the spheres sending this point to the other one, okay? And you realize that if you have two arrows, one connecting P and P prime, and another one connecting P prime and another point, then you will get an, a, a third arrow, okay? This one that I pointed here, which is what? Well, these two points are just uh, joined by the composition of the, of the first rotation and the other rotation, okay? This is again a rotation in, uh, in, the, in the sphere. So you have kind of a partial multiplication. Notice that in order to do this multiplication, I have to ensure that the endpoint of the first arrow uh, is the same as the starting point of the second arrow, okay? Another prototypical, prototypical example is the fundamental group point of, uh, of a manifold. For example, here I drew, I, I drew um, this uh, surface here. And what is the, the group point made of? Okay, so these are paths modulo homotopy. So let me explain what is that. So at the level, at the level of paths, you have so you so you can think of a path join, joining x and y 
if uh, if the initial point of of this path alpha is x and the ending point of uh, alpha is y okay and then if you have another path now starting at y and ending at uh, um, z then what you can do is that you can define a multiplication there which is just a concatenation of these two paths. So you will get a third path, which will join X on Z, okay? Now, model of homotopy means that you ident identify two paths, alpha, for, for instance, and alpha prime, you identify them if they are homotopic, meaning that there is no hole between them, okay? Okay, and then we have more elaborate examples in many like other areas, for, for example, in foliation theory, you have also um, the fundamental group point of a foliation. If you want to study topological spaces, then you can use this group point, the, fundament, the fundamental group point of a space. And also when you study geometry of, geometry of pseudo groups, also uh, uh, Lee group points show up. Or if you study, for example, um, Poisson manifolds, then, um, then Alan Weinstein, which is a very good mathemat mathematician, he introduced these symplectic groupoids as a way to desingularize, desingularize the intricate geometry of Poisson manifolds. Okay. Okay, so let me explain um, better what is a Lie groupoid. So a Lie groupoid consists of two manifolds, F and G. You can think of G as the space of arrows, arrows between objects. So M, you can think of them as objects and G arrows between the objects, okay? Then you will have two maps, the target and the source. They, they, they will just, so these two maps that goes from the space of arrows to the space of objects, they will tell me just the source of the arrow and the target of the arrow. So the, the initial uh, point and the end point of an arrow. And then of course you will have a partial multiplication, which is defined in pairs of arrows so that the first arrow ends at the initial point of the second arrow. Then there you can multiply them, okay? You will also have units for this multiplication, which are, so you can think of, a, of any object as an arrow that it doesn't do anything with respect to its multiplication. In the sense that if I have an arrow G and then I look at the source of this G, then I will have an arrow called the unit of X, which doesn't do anything for the, for the multiplication. Meaning that if I multiply, multiply this one with G, I will get again G, okay? And then I will also have inverses for this multiplication. So all this map, because I'm in the world of, of Lee somehow, this, this, all these uh, spaces are smooth or continuous. If, I mean, they are, yeah, smooth. And all these maps are also smooth, are say infinity uh, differentiable. And uh, also here, I assume a condition which is called the uh, surjective submersions in any case. So, so because I told you that any, uh, any point, any object, I can represent it as an arrow, as a unit, I will always think of M, the space of, of units, as a submanifold or subspace of G. Okay. Examples of, of Lie group points. So Lie groups are the same as Lie group points over points, okay? All the, all the arrows, I, I can multiply any two arrows because they all end and start at the same point, this one, okay? Also, if you have an action of a Lie group on a, on, a, on a manifold, say, for example, SO, SO3, which are the matrices, um, uh, uh, which are the square matrices, which are invertible, right? Uh, of size uh, three times three, and which are the, the, the columns are orthonormal vectors, okay? This, this, um, this set of matrices, they are a group, okay? And they act on the sphere. 
how by rotation, okay? So when you have a Lie group acting on a manifold, as I just told you, you can consider this action groupoid, which somehow codifies all the structure that this action has, okay? Also, if you have uh, foliations or involutive distributions, you can talk about the fundamental group point of the, of the uh, foliation, okay, which is kind of a natural generalization of the fundamental group point of a uh, space, this one that I presented, okay. It's just that now the paths lie on, um, on the leaves of the foliation. And as I told you, uh, symplectic group points, which are an important tool to study Poisson manifolds. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned before, it was Lee when he was studying symmetries of PDEs that he realized that the, that the symmetries could be reconstructing and reconstructed using their linear approximation. Okay. And this Continuous symmetries is what uh, nowadays are called Lie groups, and their linear approximation is what nowadays is called Lie algebras. Okay, this is a, as I told you, this is the foundation of Lie theory because it connected two areas: the area of differential geometry and Lie groups, and the area of Lie algebras and the say uh, Lie, um, 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 representation theory and so on. Okay, so 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 the, this was the the root of this theory made by by Sophus Lee. Okay, now Lie algebraids. So so okay. So so actually he was looking at the groups and Lie algebras, right? But now we have this uh, generalization, which is Lie groupoids and Lie algebraids. Okay, this is kind of new. So what what are Lie algebraids? So Lie algebraids. You can think of them as the infinitesimal counterpart of Lie group points, but they also arise independently of Lie, of Lie group points. And they have, they, they, they are studied somehow independently because they also codify many interesting objects. For example, one motivation is that if you have an infinite dimensional Lie algebra, for example, a Poisson manifold, what is that? So you have, you have a space, which here I think of smooth functions on a, on a manifold M or a space M, okay? And I have a Lie bracket. So this is a map that goes this way, okay? Which is anti-symmetric and satisfy the, the, um, the Jacobi identity, okay? And, um, but this is an infinite dimensional object, like an infinite dimension. This, this thing here, this is not uh, finite dimensional. This is infinite dimensional. So you are in the setting of infinite dimensional Lie algebras, okay? So if you want to study them using finite dimensional tools, you, you will end up studying Lie algebraids. Why? Because this Lie algebra, which is infinite dimensional can be codify in a finite dimensional object, okay? Which is the, which is the Lie algebra associated to this uh, Lie algebra, okay? Which is, okay, so, so this will consist of a vector bundle of uh, over M, which is the cotangent bundle. And in the space of sections of this cotangent bundle, or say on the, sp the space of sections of this cotangent bundle is just one forms, you will have also a bracket, okay? And this is determined by, by this Lie bracket somehow. Here you have the, the, formu the formula, okay? You will also have a map that relates the, the um, this cotangent bundle with the tangent bundle, okay? Here you have this Lie bracket, and here you will have the Lie bracket of vector fields. And this map will be Will, will preserve these Lie brackets, okay? And you will have also something that this Lie bracket uh, uh, satisfies some Leibniz identity, some, some algebraic equation with respect to, to this map, okay? So, 
So let me be more precise. What is a Lie algebra? A Lie algebra is just a vector bundle over a manifold, okay? To, together with a bracket on the space of sections, a map that relates this bracket with the Lie bracket of vector fields, and in such a way that this uh, satisfies the Leibniz with respect to this anchor. So this saying this somehow is telling you that this algebraic structure, it, it also has like some geometrical um, meaning or um, um, yeah, it has geometry behind, okay? Examples, well, if you look as uh, if you look at the algebra is over a point, what you will recover are the algebras. Okay. Also, like uh, if you have infinitesimal actions, so this is something that shows up when you study differential geometry. Okay. Also, when you look at evolutive distributions, okay. So this is a sub bundle of the tangent bundle of a manifold, which is close close with respect to the Lie bracket of vector field. So this will be actually a Lie algebra also. So they appear in many different settings and then they encode many different geometries. Okay, uh, another example, which is very interesting and also will give you, will give you a bridge between Lie group points and Lie algebra is the Lie algebra of a group point. Okay, and this is kind of, um, a very similar construction when you have a Lie group and you want to construct their Lie algebra, okay? What happened is that since you have here many units, in a Lie group, you only have one unit. So the Lie algebra is just a vector space, okay? But here you have many units. So what you will get is a bundle over M. So for each unit, you will have a vector space, okay? And the construction uh, is very is very easy. What you get is that you can't you can think of a of a section. Of, I mean, as a as a as a vector bundle, is just you take the um, the source fibers, the sigma. You have remember that you have here. I, I'm representing G. I'm representing my manifold inside of G. Then you have the fibers of the source which are these maps that goes from G to M and the target, right? The fibers of the target, okay? That I'm representing like this. So as a, as a vector bundle, the Lie algebra is just the tangent bundle of these source fibers, okay? When you restrict to the units. So it is like these things like this, okay? And then what, what you see is that if you have a section of, of this thing, so something like this, okay? This will give rise to a right invariant vector field. How? Well, if you have something here and you have a point G here and a point on, the, on my group point, what I can do is that I can write translate using the multiplication of my group point I can write translate this arrow to this one, okay? So if I have this, uh, this section, I can use right translation to produce a right invariant vector field on my group point, okay? And when I have this, you can check that uh, the Lie bracket of vector fields on G restrict to this subspace, okay? So as soon as, as I have this identification, I can endow this space with a Lie bracket, just transporting this, the Lie bracket of vector fields via this identification to this side. Okay. Um, uh, so let me give you more examples or examples of this construction. If, if you have a Lie group and you look at the Lie algebra, it, remember that a Lie group is a special case of a, a Lie group point. Then if you think of your Lie group as a Lie group point and you look at the Lie algebra, you recover actually the classical notion of the Lie algebra of my Lie group, okay? Also, if you have an action group point, so, so, so a, group, a Lie group G acting on a manifold and you look at the action group point, 
now you compute the algebraic and you recover the, the action algebraic, which is just the infinitesimal action. Okay, I'm just drawing some examples. You may recognize some of them, some of, of uh, other examples you may not, but yeah, I can, I, I, it, I'm just pointing out that uh, there are many, many very interesting examples showing up when you study this theory, okay? Also, when you have a, a involutive distribution um, and, um, and you look at the foliation induced by this involutive distribution, you compute the fundamental groupoid and then you look at the algebraic, you get back your foliation, okay? And if you have a symplectic groupoid and look at the Lie algebraic, what you will recover is the Lie algebraic associated to a Poisson structure on N. Okay, so just to give you an idea, so um, to give you an idea, so, so I told you that uh, somehow Lie algebraics, you can think of them as encoding infinite dimensional uh, Lie algebras, okay? So you may wonder if they have associated an infinite dimensional Lie group, as in the case of Lie algebras or finite dimensional Lie algebras, okay? And what happened is the following. If you have a Lie algebraic coming from a Lie groupoid, as in the construction that I just explained, you can think, you, can, you will have a Lie group, a Lie group, okay? associated uh, to this Lie algebra, which, which, which is as follows. So you have you group it with Lie algebra with this one, right? And then you can look at the space of bisections. What is the space of bise bisections? These are maps from M to G, such that they are, they are a section of the source and also of the target. Okay, this is the equation somehow to make sense of what I just said. And when you have this space, you will have a multiplication. Okay, I put here the formula, but in any case, you have this multiplication. And then, okay, so this space is infinite dimensional, but you can think of it as, the, as an infinite dimensional Lie group with Lie algebra, this, this one here, the sections of my Lie algebra, okay? And I mean, you have properties, somehow this gives you an intuition on, on how to deal with this object. Of course, you can go to the infinite dimensional setting and make this more precise. But in any case here, if you study just finite dimensional tools, it's okay because this will give you an intuition. For example, if I have a path on this space of bisection that's starting at the unit, if I differentiate this path, I will get a section of my algebra, it's, as it happens with the groups and, the, and it's the algebra. And also if I have a section of my the algebra, somehow I can think of the exponent, expon, exponentiate this section to produce something on the Lie group, okay? And what it is, is, is um, so you look at the flow of the right invariant vector field associated to, to this section, Okay, and this will give you when you restrict to the manifold. This will give, to the manifold M. This will give you a bisection of, of this one. Okay. Okay, so this is just to connect with the story that I had before. Um. Uh, what else? Okay. So, so once we have um, well, once we have this, um. Let me go back to the to the to this lead theory. So to the bridge that you have between Lie groupoids and Lie algebraids. Okay. So as I just told you, we have this map. Given any Lie groupoid, you produce the Lie algebraid. Okay, but now you, you, you may wonder if you can reverse this process. So even any Lie algebraid, is there a Lie groupoid so that the Lie algebraid of this Lie groupoid ends up being the Lie algebraid that you started with? Okay. 
and uh, and uh, this somehow initially for Lie groups and Lie algebras uh, was Lie's third theorem. Okay, so this process can be reversed. Any Lie algebra is given by a Lie group. Okay, and uh, uh, historically Lie's Lee's theorem referred to different but related, related results. So the first two uh, results, what they did was to, um, they relate the infinitesimal transformation of a group action, okay? So he took a very specific case that in modern language is what I'm just saying. You have an action of a Lee group acting on a manifold, and then he was looking at the infinitesimal transformation of this action, okay? So this gave rise somehow to the Lie algebra. Okay. Sorry, sorry, and, uh, yes. For for instance, uh, you if you have um, a vector field or C uh, one uh, flow acting on a Riemannian manifold, this this is a Lie algebra, and uh, mm -hmm. no, yes, yes. I mean, uh, this will give a Lie algebra. This will give you a Lie algebra. Yes, yes. and and uh, so. If you integrate it, you have a Lie group. If Is you inter if you try to integrate it, you would have a Lie group point. But oh, okay. it's not it's not always the case because, for example, if you have a vector field, it might not be complete, right? Okay. And right. this is the problem. I will mention that. So so when you try to integrate Lie algebraids, you can you, it, there are some obstructions. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, but but this is really the point that I wanted to make. So thank you very much because you are already <laughs> pointing to that to this direction. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So 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 okay, but it's also related with the story that I'm telling you here. That initially, what what Lee was doing was that he was considering in the modern language an action of a Lie group on a manifold. Okay. And then uh, he was looking at the infinitesimal transformations, okay? And then the third theorem stated the Jacobi identity for these inf infinitesimal uh, transformations. And then conversely, what he managed to prove is that in the presence of a Lie algebra of vector fields, so you have vector fields and then you have a Lie algebra, then integration gives you a locally group action, a locally group action, okay? Local, why? Because you have this problem of completeness of vector fields, okay? But the result now known as the uh, third uh, theorem of Lee, it provides an intrinsic and global converse to this but it's intrinsic and it's global, okay? And actually the proofs came after Lee. So I think one of the first proofs was given by Elie Cartan, but it was published by uh, Van Est. I don't know if you can hear the noise, but I'm sorry. I think there is some construction <laughs> next to my house, <laughs> okay? And then his proof was kind of was a more geometric proof. I don't remember it was first said or, or Cartan or maybe at the same time. So this proof of, of Cartan was a, it, has, it had a cohomological flavor and it involved the, 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 some, some complex associated to the Lie algebra, okay? And in somehow the, the, the argument is by induction on the dimension of the center of my Lie algebra, okay? This is, kind of the idea. Then Ser gave an algebraic proof using Ados theorem. Ados theorem is super powerful and is very, is highly non-trivial theorem. What it says Ados theorem is that any Lie algebra can be represented by matrices, by the Lie algebra of matrices, okay? So what he did was using this Ados theorem, which is highly non-trivial, you have your Lie algebra, you can think of it as a Lie algebra of matrices. And when you are in matrices, you have the exponential of matrices and the exponential of mat matrices somehow gives you an integration to a Lie group of matrices, okay? 
So you go like this, you have your Lie algebra, you see it as a, as a Lie algebra of matrices, and then you use the exponential to integrate it to a Lie group of matrices, okay? Um, and then there was the proof of Dusterman and Kolk. And this was a more geometric proof and it's very constructive. You can really construct it, okay? Here, here these proofs, I think they are not constructed. They, see, they say, yes, it, it's true, but they don't produce the Lie group, okay? This one was very constructive. And um, what he did was that uh, the Lie group integrating a Lie algebra is built as a quotient of, um, of, of the space of paths of my Lie algebra. So this is an infinite dimensional uh, Banach space, and then he mod he took the quotient by some equivalence relation and produced something finite dimensional. But this was somehow very, very, very good because it was very influential for Lie theory since it gave, it gave the idea to generalize this construction that they gave to the case of Lie algebraids and Lie groupoids. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this, uh, about this, um, about this proof. So think that you start with a Lie group, just to give you an idea. You start with a Lie group, okay? And then you have parts in your Lie group, this set, so that they start at the unit, okay? Now in this Lie group, you have concatenation of parts. How? Well, think that, okay, I have G1, that is a part like this, and then I have, this is G0, so, sorry, and then you have G1, okay? What I wrote here is a kind of concatenation, what, what it, and it does the following. So you are in the Lie group, so it, it ends at some point G. So, um, yeah, let Maybe G is not a good name. So it ends at some point of, of my Lie group. What I can do is to use right to use uh, the multiplication to translate this path here. Okay. So at the end, what I have here is this concatenation. Okay. So you have kind of a multiplication there. Let me delete this. Okay, so you have this multiplication at the level of, of paths. And then in these paths, you have this equivalent relation, which is just normal homotopy fixing endpoints. Okay, so two paths, you, you relate these two paths if there is no hole in between them. If you can deform one into the other one continuously fixing these two endpoints, okay? So this space, which was just uh, this space of paths, modulo this equivalence relation, and this multiplication, this induced multiplication is a Lie group, okay? And this Lie group has Lie algebra uh, G, the same Lie algebra as G has, okay? If you start with G, with Lie algebra, this, um, this um, German G, then, this, are not, this other Lie group has the same Lie algebra, has this same Lie algebra, okay? Now what you do is the following, okay? So you try to, as you, as you know, the Lie algebras come as somehow uh, um, the infinitesimal counterpart of Lie groups, then you try to differentiate all this structure to produce something on the Lie algebra, okay? So what you do is the following. So when you have a path on, a, on the Lie, Lie group, you can take the differential, right? And then right translate it to the unit. You take the differential and right translate it. This will produce a, a path on my Lie algebra. Remember that the Lie algebra is just the tangent space of G at the unit, okay? So here, what I'm doing is just, I take this one differentiated. So this will be a vector, right? And then I write translated to the unit. So this will produce a path like this, 
Now I look at this multiplication and somehow I differentiate it again to see what it produces on my Lie algebra. And it produces this kind of multiplication. Somehow I put here these things because you, you have to smooth things out somehow. Okay, but uh, intuitively what you get is a multiplication given by this very simple formula, okay? And then the more technical part, but the idea behind is very simple, is that you try to see what it means. So you have the notion of homotopy into, into parts and you, have, and you try to see what, what this gives rise when you differentiate, okay? So if you differentiate a homotopy, this will give you something. So say that you start with this one, that this goes to A0 and G1 goes to A1 and you differentiate the things in between. This will give you things in between A0 and A1 and they satisfy some technical condition, okay? But this condition is really the infinitesimal counterpart of homotopy, of normal homotopy. Okay, and then you say that two things are homotopic if they satisfy this technical condition. Okay, the good thing here is that when you do this, you realize that all these technical conditions, all this definition, they don't rely on my Lie group. Okay, they only rely on the Lie algebra structure. Okay, and then what you do is that, okay, so as you did before, my Lie group is just this space of, of paths modulo this homotopy, okay? And the multiplication is given by, is induced by this one. And then with a very hard work, right? Using analysis, they prove that this is a Lie group with Lie algebra G, okay? So the, the, the idea behind was this one, okay? So I have a Lie algebra, I have to construct a Lie group so that it's Lie algebra is G itself. And what they did is that they produced this space and they prove that this is a Lie group with Lie algebra G, okay? This was kind of nice. Let me see the time, still have some time. Okay, um, now let's go back to integrability of the algebraids. For Lie algebraids, things break. Okay, it doesn't work. It doesn't always hold. So if you start with the Lie algebraoid, it is not true that it always comes from a Lie group point. Okay, there were some partial results initially. This was very like hardly studied. They were partial results, and for some type of Lie algebraoids, they managed to construct by hand Lie group points so that they so that they you have this correspondence. And initially it was thought that this arrow worked, but then uh, Almeida and Molino showed, out, uh, showed up with a very simple example. They managed to construct a Lie algebra. Okay, so they took S times S2, they took these two form on, on this manifold, which, which this is the standard form on S2, which is if you take two vectors tangent to, to the, to the, to the sphere, then sigma uh, evaluated that these two vectors is just the area of the parallelogram made out of these two vectors, okay? So they, they constructed this, this form and in this space, they defined a Lie algebra structure. Here is the bracket, okay? And Working, I mean, the argument is super simple. I will not explain it because this uses somehow the theory of principal bundles. Bundles is a bit more technical, but for people that know principal bundles, showing that this is no, that this is a not integrable algebra is super simple. Okay. Okay, but okay. So so actually, then came Krainik and Fernandez. They they publish a beautiful paper in Annals and they understood completely the, this obstruction, the obstruction here, okay? And the obstructions were of, uh, were of topologi topological nature somehow, okay? What, what happened was the following. So they mimic the proof of 
of Dusterman, they produce this, this space of paths, modulus on homotopy. And they said, okay, if this is put was this if this space was smooth, then it was a then then it should be a Likud point with Lie algebra mainly uh, the the initial Lie algebra. But the problem was the smoothness, okay? The smoothness of this quotient, and they managed to to describe the obstruction for the smoothness in a very concrete way. So they have this uh, very somehow concrete uh, obstructions given only in terms of my Lie algebra data. Okay, um, uh, so I think I will, um, so I have like five minutes or something, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so, but, so now that we know that uh, we have obstructions for, Likupoid, for the integration of Lie algebra, uh, algebra, one can relax the notion a little bit. So here in this side, you have Lie algebra, and in this other side, you have local, local liquid okay? As Luciana was saying, was mentioning, when you try to integrate a, a, a vector field, you may find a problem is that the flow, the vector field might be not complete, so the, the flow is not globally defined, okay? So this gives rise the, 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 the word local. So locally, you have something. Okay, and what are locally group points? Are this space of arrows, this space of objects, it's just that the multiplication is locally defined, okay? It's not defined everywhere, it's just defined near the units, okay? And all yeah. the structure is defined only near the unit. But if you, your uh, vector field is complete, you have a Lie group point. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. So, so this is the so this is the the what I was saying here. All these structures are defined on a neighborhood of the units. Okay. Ex examples. <laughs> this is the example that Luciana was talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm <Ms>. sorry. <laughs> I had I had the spoiler. <laughs> no, no, it's great. <laughs> it's great. So if you have a vector field, okay, this produces a Lie algebra. I will not tell you what is the Lie algebra, but I will tell you what is the local Likud point. Okay, so you have a local Likud point, the structure. The group point is just M times R, okay? The objects are just M, my manifold. The unit is just, I mean, to any unit, you send it, you send the, to any point on M, you send it to M stand times zero, okay? The source of a, of a point here is just the projection to M. The target is just that you apply the flow of the vector field and evaluate it at time T, okay? And the multiplication, right? You have, if you, if you multiply two arrows, they have to be of this form, right? And the multiplication is just given by S by, by these times, the, the sum of the times, okay? And this, you can already see here that this is only local, right? Because, because um, so in order, so what happened here, right here, if you have a T and you try to multiply with an arrow that starts at the point that you want, what happened is that, um, so, so in order to multiply with this arrow, you need to ensure that this is well defined, okay? And this is not always the case. So this is local. And this is a Likud point if and only if X is complete, okay? There is another formula, which is the BC, the baker convert hauser formula for Lie algebra. And this is very, they use it like in, in physics, in, many areas, many applications. And it goes as follows. So this is kind of the, this is derived from the, from the, from the construction of, of Dosterman also as well, okay? You have a Lie algebra and you really want to produce a, cons, a, a, a Lie group, but it, you really want to have something constructed, okay? Everything explicit. And you're, you manage to produce something local. Okay, and this will be 
uh, an open set of G around the, the zero of G, okay? In this Lie group, the unit is just the zero. This, this is a vector space, right? So it's just the zero. The inverse is just minus X. And the multiplication is given by a, by a series, okay? But what you use is just, if you want to multiply this, you use X, Y, and brackets of, the, of these two objects. And you somehow take more brackets of this type of things, okay? And of course, why is this local? Because this converges only if X and Y are small enough, okay? Another way to, to see this BCH formula is very interesting, is the following. So suppose that your Lie algebra is the Lie algebra of a Lie group, okay? Then you have the exponential map, right? And then what you, what you do is that you try to pull back. You, you know, first of all, this is a general, general result that the exponential map is, is somehow an isomorphism near the near zero, okay? So what you can do is try to pull back the group structure that you have here to my Lie algebra. And you do all the computations and you realize that what you end up with something that can describe only in terms of my Lie algebra, okay? After you do some work, you realize that everything can be described in terms of the Lie algebra. But the idea is this one, pull back the structure using the exponential map. Okay, so, oops, uh, <laughs> just to finish, um, um, I just wanted to mention that we have some work with uh, Alejandro Cabrera from UFRJ and Yonut Markut. It was published in 2020. And what we did was actually in this setting, we managed to produce this arrow and the, the construction was very explicit, okay? It was really like, it, if you started with a Lie algebra, what you have to use was somehow something that is called a spray. It's a vector field of my Lie algebra, which generalizes the notion of a spray of a Riemannian manifold, okay? And out of this, out of these two data, you manage to construct a Lie groupoid, which is an open neighborhood of the zero section. And all the, all the structure is given out of, um, of my Lie algebra data and the spray, okay? And also, as in the case of BCH, of the BCH formula for Lie algebras, the multiplication is given by the solution of an ODE. It means that you have a series. The multiplication of two things is given by a, a power series, okay? And um, yeah, here are further questions, but uh, I think, uh, I think my, my time is finished. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, let us thanks, uh, Maria Amelia. Great, great talk. Thank I, I you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's not my, my li a research line, but I, I, I really like to sometimes hear about it. It's it, because my, my, my research line has to do you know, something, uh -huh. uh, vector fields, etc. Yes, so, yes. So, yeah. So is there some questions or comments someone desire to wish to ask some something? No. Okay, if not, we, we thank uh, Maria Mel again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> we, we are so proud to have you here. I no. think that <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yes, I, I like very much your 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 talks. <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. Uh, yeah. So we are going to draw a, uh, a gift. It's a book. Let me see the name of the book. Oh, 
that I have not um, is an offering of uh, Brazilian applied in the computational Brazilian society, mathematical society. And 